Well, greetings and salutations, Series 7 test takers. This is a Series 7 guru coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. We honor all requests for help with uh, any vendor's questions. Just easier if it's a Kaplan question because you can send me the QID. Uh, the best free supplement to your paid study materials is your uh, my YouTube channel. And uh, one of the best paid supplements is an investment in a Kaplan QBank. If you don't have a Kaplan QBank already, uh, with my Guru 10 discount code at checkout, you can get it for $58.50. Uh, I give it a big thumb, big thumbs up. It's the best in class. Uh, for that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on questions like this. And so with no further ado, let's get started on this uh, explication request. Question 1283054. An investor opens the following option positions. You go long one RAV, March 50 put at five and three quarters. And you go short one March 45 put at three. What is the investor's maximum gain, maximum loss, and break even? Well, I believe particularly in put contracts that you really should be disciplined about contract specifications. So I'm hoping that as you practice drilling your hearse, when you look at that long RAV March 50 put, you say, okay, I have a choice to sell the stock at the strike price. I paid five and three quarters to be able to stick it to somebody at 50. I'm the put-er at 50. And I'm hoping again with practice drill and rehearse, you look at a short RIV March 45 put at three. At some point, you're not fumbling around. But that's an obligation to buy the stock at the strike price. So I'm the put-er at 50. I'm the put-e at 45. You know, I think of options as being all about floors and ceilings. You know, here there's a ceiling at 50. 50 or higher, these put contracts are going to expire worthless. And there's a floor here at 45. You know, here I am obligated by the stock at 45, so there's only five points to be made or lost. Now, first thing we got to be able to do is kind of say, okay, well, we want to play between 40 and 50, and then we don't want to play no more. So there's our floor and our ceiling. What you have to be able to do is recognize that this is a spread. So a spread is when you're long and short the same type of contract. So here I am long and short a put, so this is a put spread. The next thing you've got to be able to do is debit or credit. By the way, I'm not answering the questions. I want to practice drilling or hearse these eight things. And then you have my guarantee that whatever they want to know, you've got the answer. All right, so we have to identify this as a uh, spread, long and short, the same type of contract. Is it debit or credit? Debit is when I have more money out than in. Credit is when I have more money in than out. That's what spread means. Spread means difference. That's what we're spreading is the difference. You know, I ask my gambling friends, what's the spread tonight? What's the difference in the scores that I'm betting at, betting on? Some people want the game to end with a score greater than the spread and some people want in the spread that's that difference then we need to know whether we want the contracts to exercise or expire we need to know whether we want the difference in the premiums the spread to get larger or smaller wider or narrow i think that's the hardest part to get don't need to get it because once you get those they rock and roll debit exercise widen goes together all the time like mountain dew just do it or you know when you're up when you're wide like dean you need to exercise and credit expire narrow go together all the time. Credit has six letters, expire has six letters, narrow has six letters. Uh, we have to be able to do the maximum gain and loss. But the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. There's only five points here to be made or lost. So you can shop your answer set and eliminate any two numbers offered to you as gain and loss that don't have to add up to five points here. You know, five points, remember, is the same as saying $500, depending on how many contracts we're discussing here, it's one. All right, then we got to be able to do break even, memory aid device, cow or push, call, add to the lower if it's a call spread, push, put, subtract from the higher if it's a put spread. And the last thing we got to do is determine bullish or bearish. So as I call these, don't hate the eight. These are eight testable items on spreads. As I told you, do and send always go together. So we can kind of rock and roll. All right, so let's uh, go through these things and see if we can do it. So debit or credit. Debit or credit, we said that's going to equal the difference in the strikes. And so we paid out five and three quarters and we brought in three. 
So I'm net out of pocket. I'm net out of pocket two and three quarters. Two and three quarters is 275. So I'm not going to mess with the fractions. I'm just right now going to turn this into, you know, the, the proper format. And if you're struggling with strap fractions, you just take three divided by four. That gives you 0.75. And uh, then, you know, that's per share. You know, each contract governs 100 shares. I su suggest you do analysis on a per share. By the way, it's kind of a mess. So we've identified this as a debit spread. The net debit is 275. Now, whenever you buy an option, you buy a call, you buy a put, you buy a straddle, you buy a spread. The worst case, you're going to lose your money. So the maximum loss in a debit spread is the debit of 275. 50 or higher, contracts expire and you lose the money. So that's not going to be bueno if the uh, contracts expire because you would lose your money. Uh, our maximum gain, we said the gain and the loss always equals the difference in the strikes. I think it's much easier to say, well, there's five points to be made or lost. And I just spent 275. I just think that's easier. All right. So I can make two and a quarter. But however you get there, you need to get there. You know, here I'm showing it to you a little different than I normally do because some people are visual people. So I'm just giving you a little different look. Uh, God knows in my options playlist, there are dozens of lectures on options and strat spreads and, you know, when practice problems. So lots of stuff for you. But anyways, uh, it'd be bad form to take uh, any two numbers offered to you that don't add up to five points or $500. Now, if you don't know that it's five minus two, uh, you know, the you, five points of being made or lost, you've said 275. Then you're going to have to memorize that the maximum gain of debit spread is the difference in the strikes less than that debit. I just think it's easier to know there's five points to be made or lost. I spent two and three quarters so I can make the balance with two and a quarter. So we've got our gain. We've got our loss. We've got to be able to do break even. We have some memory aid devices for break even. Cal, call, add to lower, put, subtract from higher. This is a put spread. Doesn't matter that it's a debit put spread, which this is, or a credit put spread. Doesn't matter. That stands for put, subtract from the higher. So what I'm going to do is take the higher strike, 50. I'm going to minus two and three quarters. And I'm going to get to a break even of 47.25. Uh, again, bad form to take any number that's not within that range. The break even has to be a number between 40 and 50. Oh, looks like I've made a mistake here. <laughs> I'm seeing my slide here and I got uh, 40 is that strike price. So let me just fix that. Boom, and that should be 45. Yeah, I'm sure I've already got a dozen emails from people telling me, oh, Dan, you're, you're messed up, Doug. Yeah, that's a five-point spread. There are five points there. Let me fix that, Dan. Boom. Oh, I got even a better idea. I'll put it like this. And I'll put it in the white. I should take care of it. Boom. All right, so I'm back in business. Okay, so um, now I've got to uh, determine whether it's a bullish or bearish. And the way we do that is the larger premium dominates the position. And so the larger premium is here, the 50 put. So this is a bearish uh, spread. We definitely want this thing to go down. We want it below 47 and a quarter. Okay, and boom. That's where we want it. Not a very good spread, personally. The Dean's personal thoughts on this are not testable, but you know, um, I think I would have just rather paid the five and three quarters and be able to participate all the way to zero. So, really, not a great risk reward trade off here. Uh, anyways, uh, let's just review again. The test question it says, "What's my maximum gain?" So, let's just uh, answer the question now. My maximum gain is going to be. Uh, 225, that's a, a contract, right? That's point per share. They won't give you points or all in one. In other words, you're not going to have a choice between 225 or $225. Uh, but here, the answer is going to be for max gain, $225. So let's put that there. And I better take that off of white. There we go. So that's our maximum gain. Remember, I said, if you do the eight things, whatever they want to know, you've got the, my, my guarantee, you got the answer. Our maximum loss, you shouldn't be struggling too much with the maximum loss because you should know that when you spend money, the worst case is you're going to lose it. So that's two and three quarters or $275. I'll put that in red. 
And that is the answer to that question. So there's our maximum loss. Uh, and by the way, what I meant by that is you shouldn't be struggling too much with that because what you should have been able to kind of do pretty quickly is say that, well, when I spend money, the worst case is I'm going to lose it, right? So that's that 275. And as we said, the difference would be that two and a quarter there, right? So boom. So you shouldn't have been struggling with that, that max loss uh, question. Anytime you buy a straddle, buy a combo, buy a call, buy a put, here we're buying the spread. Debit means I'm buying the spread. You lose your money. Okay, and then my break even, and we have our break even. Our break even is going to be push, put, subtract from the higher. We're going to take the 50 uh, minus the net debit or credit. Doesn't matter whether it's a debit or credit. Does not matter. Whatever that number is, in this case, it's 275. And we get our break even. I'll just put a different color here and let's put in a bigger font. And uh, I'm not being facetious. My arithmetic skills are really bad. So I'm going to use my calculator. Uh, 50 minus 275 is 4725. And that's my break even. Now, I would suggest if you are going to memorize break evens, that you put a little arrow to remind yourself where you want the market price of the stock to be in relationship to that break even. This is bearish. And that answers our last question. Our last question was, what is the break even? And the break even is 47 and a quarter. All right. So boom, boom. And I uh, hope you found that helpful. Uh, remember, inch by inch, your series seven is a cinch, yard by yard. Your Series 7 is hard. And uh, I would just remind you that even if this was missing the premiums, you could have told me this is bearish because you should know that higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. Right? Lower strike call contracts always have greater premiums. Longer term option contracts always have greater premiums. All right, so we did the eight. We identified it as a spread. We determined debit exercise widen. By the way, once you get the menu done, you can think about it. Am I going to be happy if somebody sticks it to me at 45? I buy it at 45 and I sell it at 50. Yeah, that's bueno. It's good. I made five points, less than two and three quarters. But don't think about it until after you get the menu done. If I'm your broker and I said, hey, we did this for a net of two and three quarters and I can close it out for you today at four, that would be good because if it widened from two and three quarters to four, that would be your gain, the difference between four and two and three quarters, it widened. The difference widened from two and three quarters to four. Hardest part to get, don't need to get it. We determined our maximum uh, loss was what we paid. The maximum gain is the difference in strikes less than that uh, debit. You know, there's five points to be made or lost in this spread. That's the whole point of a spread is I'm going to play between 50 and 45. I don't want to play no more. Of the five points to be made or lost, I spent two and three quarters. Max gain is two and a quarter. You can memorize difference in the strikes less than that debit if you choose. And then we did a uh, push, put subtract from the higher to get our break even. And we determined that it was bearish. All right. So remember, inch by inch, your series seven is a cinch. Yard by yard, your series seven is hard. And I'll see you for the next explication request.